Can I kill my fears? How many of us have something we are scared of right now? You are afraid of. Don't tell me. Don't raise up your hand. In your mind. Some of people are scared of the rain that is currently falling. And so they won't come to church. They don't want rain to touch them. We fear so many things. Sometimes we are afraid of being alone. Sometimes we are afraid of our health. Some believers fear that they will fall sick. Some fear that the problem their parents had will happen to them. Some people had their parents die early in life and they are saying, will I have the same problem? Some had their parents had different kind of sicknesses and they asked, will I have the same issues? Some are scared of their health. Some are scared of terminal disease and say, will terminal disease terminate my life? Some are scared of, will I ever get married? And some that believe that we get married, their fear is, will I get married to the right person? And some who are married are scared, will this marriage work? Will it always work? Some people are scared, will I find my purpose in life? Will I fulfill purpose? Will, will, I, will I die empty? Many are scared of getting a job. Will I get a job? And will I get a good job? Or will I be able to change my job? Some people are asking themselves, will I have money? Will I take care of my children? Will I be able to take care of them the way I want? I've been around this for too long. Will I ever have a breakthrough in life? Will I die well? Will I die fulfilled? Different fears that we entertain as believers. But God has not given us fear in our lives. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity. There was no fear at all for the man born again. In fact, nothing like fear existed until man fell. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says that the Lord God called Adam. And when he, he says, I heard you walking in the garden and I hid myself because I was afraid. I was naked. That was the first time fear was introduced because man fell. And fear has different devastating effects on us. Sometimes it makes us to disobey God. In 1 Samuel 15, 24, we see how Saul said, I was afraid of the people. 1 Samuel 15, 24. I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded, even though it was against what God wanted. Sometimes fear leads to non-fulfillment of purpose. We don't give our best as believers. Because you are thinking that what if I lose everything all the same? The parable of the talent, the guy that did not invest the talent, is the reason he gave was that I was afraid. I was afraid. I've seen many people who have not been able to fulfill the reasons why God called them. They've not given expression to who they really are just because of fear. Fear is a terrible thing. It makes you lose your focus. Makes you play like a chicken when you should be flying like an eagle. And today I want to just quickly remind us of three ways we conquer fear. There are many more ways. But because of our time, we want to spend time worshipping. I want to just talk about these three. Which is remembering, beholding, and worshipping. Remembering, beholding, and worshiping. If you always remember the goodness of God, fear will live your life. 
I love Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 19. Deuteronomy 7 19. It says, remember the great terror the Lord your God sent against them. You saw it all with your own eyes. And remember the miraculous signs and wonders and the strong hand and powerful arm with which he brought you out of Egypt. The Lord your God will use the same power against the people you fear. Do not be afraid of those nations for the Lord your God is among you and he is great and awesome. I see it again in Psalm 105 verse 4. It says, search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Psalm 105 verse 4. Verse 5 says, remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given. It says, for you are the children of his servant Abraham. You are the descendants of Jacob. We are the True seed of Abraham, Galatians 3.19, sorry, 3.9. And as a true seed of Abraham, he said, remember, can I kill my fears? How many of us have something we are scared of right now? You are afraid of, don't tell me, don't raise up your hand. In your mind, some of people are scared of the rain that is currently falling. And so they won't come to church. They don't want rain to touch them. We fear so many things. Sometimes we are afraid of being alone. Sometimes we are afraid of our health. Some believers fear that they will fall sick. Some fear that the problem their parents had would happen to them. Some people had their parents die early in life and they are saying, will I have the same problem? Some had their parents had different kinds of sicknesses and they asked, will I have the same issues? Some are scared of their health. Some are scared of terminal disease and say, will terminal disease terminate my life? Some are scared of, will I ever get married and some that believe that we get married their fear is will I get married to the right person and some who are married are scared will this marriage work will it always work some people are scared will I find my purpose in life will I fulfill purpose will, will I will I die empty many are scared of getting a job. Will I get a job? And will I get a good job? Or will I be able to change my job? Some people are asking themselves, will I have money? Will I take care of my children? Will I be able to take care of them the way I want? I've been around this for too long. Will I ever have a breakthrough in life? Will I die well? Will I die fulfilled? Different fears that we entertain as believers. But God has not given us fear in our lives. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity. There was no fear at all for the man born again. In fact, nothing like fear existed until man fell. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says that the Lord God called Adam. And when he, he says, I heard you walking in the garden and I hid myself because I was afraid. I was naked. That was the first time fear was introduced because man fell. And fear has different devastating effect on us. Sometimes it makes us to disobey God. In 1 Samuel 15, 24, we see how Saul said, I was afraid of the people. 1 Samuel 15, 24. I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded, even though it was against what God wanted. 
Sometimes fear leads to non-fulfillment of purpose. We don't give our best as believers. Because we are thinking that what if I lose everything all the same? The parable of the talent, the guy that did not invest the talents, is the reason he gave was that I was afraid. I was afraid. I've seen many people who have not been able to fulfill the reasons why God called them. They've not given expression to who they really are just because of fear. Fear is a terrible thing. It makes you lose your focus. Makes you play like a chicken when you should be flying like an eagle. And today I want to just quickly remind us of three ways we conquer fear. There are many more ways. Because of our time, we want to spend time worshipping. I want to just talk about these three, which is remembering, beholding, and worshipping. Remembering, beholding, and worshipping. If you always remember the goodness of God, fear will live your life. I love Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 19. Deuteronomy 7, 19. It says, Remember the great terror the Lord your God sent against them. You saw it all with your own eyes. And remember the miraculous signs and wonders and the strong hand and powerful arm with which he brought you out of Egypt. The Lord your God will use the same power against the people you fear. Do not be afraid of those nations, for the Lord your God is among you, and he is great and awesome. I see it again in Psalm 105, verse 4. It says, search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Psalm 105, verse 4. Verse 5 says, remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given. He says, for you are the children of his servant Abraham. You are the descendants of Jacob. We are the true seed of Abraham. Galatians 3.19. Sorry, 3.9. And as the true seed of Abraham, he said, remember what he has done for you. Being able to remember is a powerful weapon. That's why Sometimes some old people have a problem. They forget. In fact, one of the things that the devil used to attack people is to attack their memory. Because once memory is gone, you can be depressed and frustrated. Because you can't remember. If you can remember what God has done for you, it's a powerful tool and weapon against the enemy. That you can sit down and recollect and say, this is who God is to me. This is what God has done for me. And that's why you should write your testimonies. That's why we share testimonies. Because you remember what God has done for you. You remember what he has done for others around you. And then it encourages you. In fact, you should even share your testimonies with your children. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell them. What we saw, he was telling them after they've left. He said, he God kept on reminding the the Israelites, how he saved them from Egypt. And he told them, tell your children about the miracles. That's why we heard about it. Remember, don't forget what he has done. Sometimes we forget. And we are too quick to forget. We are chasing what is ahead and we forget what is behind. How God has always showed up for us. That's why that Deuteronomy chapter 7 from the, the, the verse we read, verse 19, it says the same power... That helped you. It says, The Lord your God will use the same power against the people that you fear. There is something you have conquered before. That same God will use the same power against the people that you fear and the things that are ahead of you that you fear. That was what David did. First Samuel 17 37. David said, the Lord that rescued me from the claws of the lion and of the bear rescued me from this Philistine. The whole of Israel were afraid. 
David remembered what God has done for him. Listen, there is something powerful about remembering what God has done for you. Remember. Remember how he showed up for you. Has God ever showed up for you before? Anybody here that God has never been good to you? Let me see your hand up. He has never done any good thing for you. Oh, nobody. I know. Ah, so everybody, God has been good to you? Has God been good to you? Remember what he has done. Don't forget. I remember when I was looking for admission. Sorry, when I was looking for a job. I've shared the story before. Years ago, over 20 years ago. <laughs> no, that period of my life, I got no like never before. You apply for a job and they have a very nice way of writing the mail. We appreciate your time in this selection process. But we go through a very competitive process in selecting our candidates. I haven't reviewed your application. We regret to announce to you, or we are sorry to announce to you that we are not going to proceed further. But should in case there is something in the future, we may still consider you. Then you get the first rejection, second rejection, third rejection. Later, you start looking at yourself, maybe, maybe, maybe the problem is me. Then I remember that that was how, during my time of looking for admission to university too, it was the same thing. But eventually, the place I got, God really wanted me to go there. Because that was the place that God arrested me. Because I wanted to be a bad boy in the university. My dream, I had only one goal in university, to be a bad boy. But when I was in secondary school, my mom was always around my case. You must be a good boy. And she was around me. Even my teacher, she followed up everything. So everybody was watching me. All eyes on me. So when it was time for the rest of the day, I say, let me see the eyes that will be on me now. For I will be alone. I'm going to do what I want to do. But God did that. Did, so I went through many processes. So when I was looking for a job, I remember that, no, that same God that did it for me, we do it again. Is that something you are going through today? If God has ever showed up for you, he will show up for you again. If he has ever showed up for you, he will show up for you again. The devil is trying to disturb you and tell you about things that is ahead. Sometimes even in church, I see challenges. But I'm not moved because there is no talent that we have not saved before. You say, oh, I'm trusting God for a child. We've seen people that are 17 years without a baby. I've gotten babies. 19, 10, 7 years, 9 years. Oh, I'm not feeling fine. There is no sickness that has not been cured yet. I remember. I don't know about you. I read our testimony sometimes. Oh, I don't, I've, seen people, I've seen people came here with nothing. And now they are millionaires. I remember. So when I see somebody come and is having a problem today, I don't see the person in that light. I see the person as said, another millionaire. Another millionaire. Listen, I always remember. I don't look at any member based on your problem. I look at you based on what I see in the scripture. And I also remember what God has done for us, for other people who have been here before. Your own story will not be different. You know, I've shared it before. That... One of the reasons why we are afraid is because we are focusing on the process. We need to think about the end product. And for the believer, we know your end. You have won. It doesn't matter what you are going through right now. Your end is clear. You won. And I gave an example this morning in Lekki Chapel. Let me share it again. I shared it here before. But we need to remind ourselves all over again. In 1996, Nigeria was playing against Brazil. Semi-finals. World Olympics, right? Olympic Cup. Then I used to watch football until the Lord delivered me from football. I said the Lord delivered me because I was a fanatic. If there is football and there is church on Sunday, I will not go to church. I will watch football. So that was how bad I was. So I had to work on it. Now I overwork on it. I can't watch football again. <laughs> So that's why I said the Lord delivered me. Then when Nigeria was playing that match, we were all at the edge of our seats. How many of you watched that match then? Or some of you are not born. Sorry. If you were born and you watched my let me see your hand up. Ah, you didn't watch the match. 
Follow me. Let me see if you watch the match. Okay, like, uh, you watch highlights. <laughs> like I said, watch highlights. So that, that day, the whole nation, we are the cringing at the edge of our seats. And we are believing that Nigeria will win that cup. Then 1-0. 2-0. 3-0. When they gave us 3. Ah, we were scared that, no, we can't make it again. We were afraid. And we were, we were dejected. We were depressed. We were cursing Nigeria. Nothing good will come out of this country. I think, who was the president? There was this a near Bacha or something. They said that even the president, this scene is flowing from the door. Wicked man. They were cursing Abacha. Everyone was saying all sorts of things. Then suddenly, 3-1, 3-2, 3-3. Nigeria now won 4-3. Hey, the whole place went. Wah. And then it was, a, what they call that death? Is it something of death? But, uh, golden goal. If When they were 3-3 and they were in extra time, whoever scores one goal has won. So when Nigeria scored the goal, the game just ended. Ah! Oh, oh. That day you go sleep. Your belly will just save you in Nigeria. On top of your bed, you will do like this. Ah! It was too sweet. But before that sweet end, there was a terrible process that we went through. I'm telling you that in your life, when you are going, but the point I'm trying to make is that if you watch the match now and you saw Nigeria is losing 3-0, Will you be scared? Why will you not be scared? You know the end result. I'm saying in your life, we know the end result. You won. You, the end is clear. Don't let, whatever you are going through, every time, don't let the process distract you. You have a backing of the Lord. Secondly, behold the real you. When you are beholding the real you, it helps you. The believer by design by configuration, cannot fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of the believer cannot fear. The way God prepared and designed you, fear is not possible. But when you are not looking at who you really are, you are not building your new self in Christ Jesus, you realize that fear will fill your heart. Isaiah 26 verse 3, it says you will put in perfect peace all whose Hearts, our thoughts are fixed on you. It depends on what you are looking at. Once your thought is fixed on him, fear will thin out. First John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast away fear. If you know love, if you know, listen, I, I'm going to talk about God's love very soon. Believers don't really appreciate what God's love is. We sing it, no shadows you will light up. Mountains you won't climb up. <laughs> See, God is so jealous about you. How many of you, your child is, has offended you? I am not happy with the child. So let me cut the leg. Let me pluck out the eyes. When I was young, my father once told me one day, I'm going to remove your eyes. <laughs> my father is a soldier. He sat me down. He brought out a knife. He was asking me to confess something and I was taking my time to confess. He says, sit down. He had one soldier knife. It's like a walking stick. You just roll it out and bring it a knife there inside. <laughs> and he sat with that. My mother, <laughs> I know he was playing with me. He was just playing. He wanted to, to ter terrorize me. Too. But the point is that he can't do anything. He can't remove my eyes. That's even the extreme. He cannot remove the eyes. I many of you, your, your, child has, your, your child has offended you. See, let's cut the leg. Let's remove the eyes. Even in, the, even in your discipline, there is protection. Because you know the best for your child. If you know how God loves you, ah, God is so jealous about you. He will not look at you and see you go down. It's too expensive for him. Even when you make mistakes sometimes and you miss the mark, he's still trusting and wanting the best for you. Oh, look at Peter. Peter said, Master, if it is you, tell me to come out from the boat. He was telling Jesus, Jesus said, come. Uh, and as he was coming, he was like, eh? He's walking. Then he became afraid. Look at God said, you see, God catch you. You, you, you. Sink now. No. What did he do? He grabbed him. He should have gone, but 
he can't allow him to go. Even when you make mistakes, when your eyes are veered off from the place it should be, God is so merciful, he will grab you like Joshua grab Peter. You won't sink. I say you can never sink. That's the kind of God that we serve. He's a jealous God. He wants the best for us. And every opportunity to fear is also an opportunity to trust God. Anytime you are f- afraid, remember that you can also trust God. And so you need to take captive your thoughts for Jesus Christ. It is very important. And you know one thing with fear is that it comes and it comes again. So if you deal with it once, you don't say, I've conquered fear now. No, tomorrow something else will show up. Something else will show up. But keep beholding. Beholding who you are. 2 Corinthians 3.18 We all with an unveiled face, we are beholding as the mirror the glory of the Lord.